Well, I, I think maybe to put into perspective the win, I've got to really talk about Philadelphia briefly first. A lot, a lot of respect for what Jim Curtin and the group have done there with this team. Incredibly consistent group of players. Up close and personal, first time that we've run into them. Um, you know, I was even more impressed with some of the quality of their group. They have ability to score from all areas of, of the field, set pieces, their pace, their power, their quality on the ball. So I think it, I think it leads nicely into how well we played, how well we executed a, a very different plan, and Recording the, in progress. The, there were some what I felt were some heroic performances from individuals. Uh, that, that took on a lot of information in one week and gave us not only a, a, a very important picture but a clean sheet as well. Thank you, Coach. A reminder to everybody that we will begin with questions here in the room and then we'll kick it off to uh, those who are on the website, on, on, the, on the Zoom call. So please, for those on the Zoom, Zoom call, uh, alert me through the chat if you have any questions for Coach or any of the players who will be coming after me. With that, uh, Drake, go ahead. Yeah, obviously CJ got the goal, but it really since then. <laughs> since then, I mean, there was a lot of uh, just really anxious moments that Joe Willis had to deal with. Um, Walker had a couple of saves. Jack was was tremendous in dealing with a lot of the pressure as well. Did you feel that anxiety, especially in the second half, and trying to absorb that pressure <coughs> that Philly had? Yeah, I, I think we. If I mean, I'll have to look back at the game, Drake, but. The, the final moments, the last 10, maybe 12 minutes, they, they built some very good pressure, you might expect that. Um, we certainly had opportunities to make life a hell of a lot more comfortable for ourselves. So when all said and done, those final moments, you know, there are players that have got to earn their money, and they did. Now, you know, we can say that probably the, the, the most um, difficult moment was when Joe came and, and missed the punch and it created some confusion. Uh, but I think all in all, if you look at the way that that back three defended, the way that the wing backs when they played went about their business, Alex Newell was fantastic when he came into the game. Daniel Lovitz looked like he'd been playing it all of his career. Um, but what is important in that shape is the quality the energy and the ability of our attacking three players. So Randall, Hanny and, and CJ were, were, were vital to the way that we went about our business. And you know, all three of those guys had an impact in different ways. You know, CJ obviously with a goal and was, was terrific with his centre forward play. But the energy, creativity and, and perseverance from the other two um, constantly kept a very good team on their toes. And, and in many ways, it's as important as the defensive duties. You, you're making chances, you're getting into good areas. I, I felt we made some, some much better choices tonight to, to manage the game as well. The, the shape of the group gave us some natural width and areas that we could, could just control a little bit more. And the guys did a great job the longer the game went on. Gary, so the East leaders come here and lose. Last year's supporter shield winners come here and lose. I mean, do you feel like the, this group, your group is starting to show its own legitimate, legitimacy as a contender in the league? Yeah, I, I, think, I think credentials, gentry, are, are what you may be getting at. But I, I, I'd like to, I mean, it's, it's great to be thinking that way. But, you know, you, you forget that we're 18 months old as a group. There are still definitely areas of our game and our group that we can continue to improve. But I think one of the most encouraging things is the way that we've been able to go about our business at home here. You know, we've continued to make it a very, very difficult place to play. Yet again, we're in double figures with opportunities at goal against a very, very good team, top team. Um, We've kept a clean sheet in the process, but the growth of, of the group, their, their experiences together are getting better and better week on week. 
And of course, look, we can look at it and say, well, we've had, we've had a lion's share of home games. We need to take advantage of these. That's not always easy. It, it might sound so. But when you're at home week after week, there, there is a tendency to go, OK, if we don't get it done this week, we'll, we'll be fine next week. Well, suddenly next week becomes a difficulty as well. And before you know it, you've not picked up enough points. So we saw it earlier on in the season when we had those you know, exchanges and, and home games earlier. I think we've learned some lessons from that. And we're certainly moving in the right direction. Um, you know, no doubt about it, the lads will be confident in the way that they're playing. And if we continue to show the sort of um, endeavours, discipline, determination that we do, then, you know, I think we'll be in a reasonable spot. But you, you look at those top teams, there's a lot, lot more experiences together that, that take, um, or that, that, that give you and make you a top three team. And, and I think, you know, we'll, we'll obviously fight tooth and nail to be part of that, but I think in the end that uh, you'll see the likes of New England, that there's, there's a lot of experiences as a, as a group there. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Gary, Claudio Villalobos here. Um, the, the, the novelty tonight about you using 300 back, which is not usually what you, you set up, and also, uh, correct, uh, correct me if I'm mistaken, the position that Randall Dale played, being different from what he usually does from the, on the outside. Is that uh, something that you set up tactically, yes, for, 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 for because of the rival tonight, or is it something that is, is going to be here to stay? Um, well, I, I, I do genuinely think and, and felt that, you know, their, their type of system, that diamond shape, and we ran into it in New York in slightly different circumstances, but that shape is incredibly competitive. They they win a lot of second phase ball and, and because of the quality in their group, they, they tend to, for want of a better terminology, work you over a bit. They've got two excellent forwards, whoever plays. And if you look at their stats, what they do is, is just, you know, in, a, in, a, in the process of the game, get their fullbacks higher and higher, they work crosses into good areas, they're, they're incredibly efficient in the way that they go about their work, and they make the game quick. And I, I always felt that the tough part of tonight would be, how can we get to grips with the game and ask them some serious questions? In our usual shape, it just looked to me like some of our more creative players would get overwhelmed with either pressure or, or on, the, on the wrong side of the ball. And listen, it wasn't always perfect, but I felt that there were some very, very good occasions for us to counter-attack, for us to be aggressive, to manage the ball, and, and to ask a, a top team some serious questions. You know, you're not just going to be able to do what you want, and now you're going to have to you know, think a little bit more, which they did. Listen, they created chances too. And, and these games are, are not going to be runaway victories. They're always going to be tight affairs but trying to turn what might just have been a competitive game into a victory was never, ever going to be easy. And the guys have managed to do that tomorrow. Yeah. Hey, um, Gary, what did you see on CJ's opening goal? And then, obviously, after her cousin, what's the emotional roller coaster of, of holding on for the next 88 minutes? We well, yeah, completely different to the last two games. Um, I, it was actually a little bit early to celebrate. It, it caught me by surprise. <laughs> uh, you know, a nice sequence of, of play and a great finish and ultimately, of course, the winner. Um, there's so much football to be played beyond that. Uh, my first instinct, as always, was you know, to get the message to the group that the game hasn't even started yet. You know, we still have a long way to go to impose ourselves and, and to try and make sure that our style was going to be the determining factor on the night. Um, there was a, a lot of work to be done, but of course, very, very pleased to, to get the to get the opener. You can you can look around the league, as we've said multiple times, if you can get yourself in front, you give yourself a much better chance in this league in general. So it, it, it felt a lot, lot better than the last couple of games. Um, and my anxiousness was slightly different to the last two games in the final moments. 
we have time for one final question, Greg. Uh, you're, we talked about obviously how this particular shape, um, what worked, you mentioned Alex Moore, you mentioned Lovitz, uh, I'm sure Alistair uh, fits into that category as well. I'm curious when you start talking about those guys, particularly someone like Alistair, obviously Hannibal and Wynn Walker, when those guys go to the Gold Cup, um, does this type of shape still work with the guys you've had, particularly someone like Dylan Nealis, who is still with the group and obviously can, can play that choice type of position as yeah. well? We've we've got some some very good bodies to come in and replace the ones that are going to be missing. It goes without saying that the type of experience that um, Walker and, and Annabelle in particular have is always tough to replace. Um, Brian Anunga's 45 minutes tonight. Um, you know Matt Lagrassa able to to play a, a good portion of the game in New York. You know they'll serve them both very very well. To, to try and fill those shoes. In, in Dylan's case, I, I, I think he's more than capable of fulfilling either role as a fullback or a wingback. He's, he's done that uh, in Miami, and I, I wouldn't have any uh, qualms about playing Dylan or, or even Alex there in the future if we need to. Alex was absolutely astounding as a wingback. He did, I'm not sure he made a mistake. He was. He was in their box when we were attacking, as he normally would be as a, as a wide player, which you might expect from a, a wing back. And he was, you know, absolutely terrific as a as a defender in one v one moments. And you know, maybe we found a, a, another valuable spot for a very valuable player. Thanks, Tom. Today, you scored against Philadelphia, your previous club before, but how does it feel to? Score against them after uh, being traded. Ah, it feels really good. It feels really good. Uh, Philly was a place I, I think I was able to come to an understanding of who I am on the field and off the field, and I do owe a lot to them. Um, but obviously, when you you leave a place and it's and it's unexpected, anytime you play them again, you want to obviously show show it you feel like uh, they're missing out on. And I felt like I could have scored many more. Uh, ultimately, I'm just happy that we got the three points. And it's a, it's a good game for us to, to grind out and, and get back at it on Thursday. Thank you, CJ. Uh, a reminder for those on the chat, please, let me through it if you have uh, a question for CJ. And then we'll kick it off with questions here in the room. Uh, Gentry, go ahead. Yeah, CJ, I wanted to ask how many times tonight you felt like you had a second, or were about to score a second with the way it was playing out? Uh, many times. Like, uh, the most times I've ever had in a game in my career. And ultimately, I'm happy with myself because I found myself in those positions. And I, I do believe the way we play, I'll find myself in those positions uh, many more times. So just staying focused and doing uh, the extra work in training, and uh, I believe that those will come. How much of the defensive side of the game would, do you feel like it was intensified just based off the shape you guys were playing? That maybe your responsibilities and the, what was required of you took more of you to, yeah. to put more pressure on them, but also um, obviously tracking back and, and helping out the defense as well? Yeah, you know, it's something that I personally have been used to in my career. I played out wide. I know the, you know, the ask when it comes to defensive work, and I, I have no problem doing it. And it's something where if you can get two forwards to uh, embrace that role, it, it makes it hard for other teams to break you down. And I think we, we saw that tonight. And it'll be interesting moving forward because we now have been able to you know, show success in a couple different formations. So it's always going to be good to be able to be malleable and versatile. And ultimately, that's just going to help us in the long run. Congratulations, CJ, uh, you. on your goal. Three points at home that generate confidence with the team. Um, defensively, with this formation, how do you feel with your role? Because you like to go and help the defense, you know. How do you feel on that on, with, this new, with this new formation? Uh, I have no problem doing it. I, I know it helps my team. And there's something about forwards <clears throat> working hard, working backwards that motivates everybody else on the pitch as well. So. 
if I can do that and then also be in position to score goals, I'm going to be very happy at the end of the game. Hey, so you've you played up top uh, by yourself. You've played up with uh, Jonder and Baji. Uh, now you're playing with uh, with Hani and Randall, in kind of different positions. You know, how does that kind of kind of affect you? You're you're used to playing with these guys, but now kind of in in, in different spots. Like, how do you how does that, how does that kind of affect your your play your preparation? Yeah, you know, I think for me again, it's my tenth year in the league, so I've seen many different formations. And while when I was younger, I felt like there was an importance to have consistency with a, a certain group uh, of players. As I've gone on in my career, it's really, you know, you're really bringing another aspect uh, to your, your team if you can have multiple players in multiple positions. And the way we train and the way other guys, especially within the forward core, understand what we're trying to do, I think we can work seamlessly together, whoever is um, on the pitch. And that's exciting. That's exciting. It, it keeps things, it keeps the competition high in training. Everybody wants to be on the field. And then when we get on the field, I think there's always going to be opportunity, no matter the combination. CJ, how do you think the match we can beat Alana in the next game? Alana, I'm sorry, did you ask that one more time? Yeah. <laughs> How you can how you can beat Alana in the next game? What do you think uh, about about the next game very soon? Yeah, I think there were some tactical issues that we had with Atlanta to start the game, and when you couple that with the atmosphere of their you know their stadium, it was it was a, a bit of a hurdle for us to get get over. But I think again the resilience we showed in that game to be able to come back, we were able to see what would work against them, and now we have a lot of confidence as well. Um, and I think if we just do what we've been doing, we're going to be able to get a win. We have time for one more question for CJ. Go ahead. CJ, you've mentioned confidence a couple times now. When you get the result uh, tonight against, obviously, one of the better teams in the East, does that start to build confidence, not just you know individually, but kind of as the arc of your season uh, progresses a little bit? Yeah, um, 10, 11 games in. A third of the way through, we've been able to get wins against you know two of the top teams in our conference. Um, we ultimately have found ourselves in positions where we either got a tie or a loss when we know we could have given more. And while that is a bit of a stinger, you know, it it, it is better to know the only reason where we, why we're not higher up in the table is because of ourselves. So when we go into training. Again, the confidence aspect leads to more sharpness um, in, in training, and there's a belief now amongst this group, and I, and I believe that'll carry us through the rest of the season. Uh, good. It feels really good. Um, Philadelphia is a really good team ahead of us in the standings, so uh, getting three points plus a clean sheet on top of it, um, you know, couldn't. A few things uh, went wrong, but for the most part, you know, couldn't have gone better. Yeah, first a little bit of Dick Slabowski vibes over there with the shirt, but uh, <laughs> it, feel, it feels like that kind of translated into what you needed in terms of the the, the poise. Um, kind of a lot of, whether it was Brazil goal, whether it was uh, Santos, Burke, there was a lot of times where kind of had a quick reaction save, um, and it needed Walker and guys in front of you to, to help out as well. You know, how do you feel about some of those really intense moments, uh, especially after Sabon scored early? Yeah, I mean, CJ getting the early goal is huge for us. We've obviously gone down early a lot this year. So to get that goal, um, it gave us a, a platform for the rest of the game. Then with the saves, um, you know, you just have to prepare and, and always be ready. It's, it's an interesting position because, especially with this team, there's a lot of games where you don't see a lot of action. But then all of a sudden, you're called on and, and you have to you know, step up and make a save. So. Uh, trying to stay focused for 90 minutes and, and always being ready. Um, and then we also have defenders who take a lot of pride in keeping clean sheets. So uh, you see a lot of blocks and a lot of uh, you know second chance uh, clearances from our from our defenders. Oh, okay, awesome. Yeah, no, it's all good. Um, I think that probably the, the most notable save that you had to make tonight, he was pushing the one over the bar and Santos had it pretty much on the penalty spot. What did you see on that play? How did it develop? And then 
What's the relief like to know that you you know you got your fingertips to it and managed to keep it out? Yeah, to be honest, I don't really remember uh, exactly the buildup, but I know they had a player with the ball on, on my right side uh, who crossed it. I tried to just get myself to the center of the goal as fast as possible and, and get set. And um, fortunately, I had a clear view on on the shot, and uh, he hit it, you know, right at me for the most part. So uh, I was able to to get a fingertip to it. Hey Joe, uh, the, uh, the 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 missed punch that you know kind of had everybody gasping, but you know you still still made it back to uh, to make the save. I mean, everything's moving that fast. How do you how do you keep your cool in situations like that? Yeah, it's uh, you know it's a mistake on my part. I should probably start a little higher and, and come a little sooner. Um, but once you make a mistake. Uh, I always tell young goalkeepers you have to have a short memory to play goalkeeper uh, because the play's not over, you know, obviously. So when you make a mistake, you have to not even think about it. We'll assess it now after the game, but in the moment, uh, you know, as long as the ball's not in the back of the net, you need to be focused and ready and uh, try and make up for any mistakes that you do make. Joe, uh, um, look, uh, take it from what you said about sometimes not having to see much action with this team. And from outside looking in, it looked like the game had kind of two sets. Uh, a long time ago, you were not busy pretty much at all. And all of a sudden, it just seems like everything happens all the time. Mm -hmm. How difficult is that from your position when, when a game develops like that? Yeah, it can be tough. Um, like I said, though, you have to stay focused for 90 minutes because you never know uh, what's going to happen. Uh, I think in the first half, you know, I had to make a few saves, but for the most part, I think we controlled the game. We pressed really well. We were able to win balls in good, uh, good positions. And then, you know, you're not going to dominate possession for 90 minutes. So you have to know that uh, at some point, you know, especially when you're leading and the other team's kind of throwing caution to the wind and, and throwing numbers forward, that you're going to have to step up and, and make some saves at some point or, or make some plays, um, whatever, whatever it may be. Yeah, Joe, so after. Last season's success, which I guess you could say maybe surprised the people around the MLS. You didn't know what to expect. And you, know, you beat New England here, you beat Philly here. And when you get these kind of wins, do you feel like this, the, it, it's earning respect to where you know, people are starting to expect this from National now? Yeah, I mean, I think it, it does earn us a little bit of respect. It's obviously nice to, to beat top teams in this league, especially when they're ahead of you in the standings. But um, we need to keep this as the standard uh, too many times, especially at home. We've, gone down early and, and, and scratched and clawed and eked out a, a draw at best. And those are games that if we start a little bit better, you know, we get a win out of and, and we're higher in the standings. So it's obviously nice, like I said, to, to beat the teams higher than you in the standings, but we need to keep that same mentality and start that way against every every team that we play. Um, when you are playing behind a pretty different formation to what you usually are behind. Is there a difference in maybe the types of shots you see or what are the differences other than when you're playing out of the back, you've got Walker basically right next to you to, to play short too? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a few differences. We, we worked on that formation all week. So, um, you know, we worked out the kinks in training and knew pretty much what to expect uh, from Philadelphia from watching their previous games. So. Um, you know, they're one of the top crossing teams in the league, so we figured with wing backs plus three big guys in the middle, we'd hopefully be able to negate a lot of that, and I think we did. Um, as far as playing out of the back, it's always nice to have Walker there, but basically five defenders at some point, um, because you, you kind of think that they'll maybe throw three, potentially four guys pressing, um, so you should always have numbers up when you're trying to build out of the back. And, that's something when, when we do build out of the back, we can be very good at and we can create opportunities on the other side of the field. So um, it's something that you know, we enjoy doing.